Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Waves from Slide Nerd here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about something long awaited by everyone on our channel, Android Data Storage Options. What are the different options available for you for storing data on your Android devices? Which option should you take in what circumstance? And we are gonna see the second part with the help of a simple example. So let's get started. So the different data storage options that are available to you are one, shared preferences, store data in key value pairs. Don't worry about this word. We will see what it is shortly. SQLite databases where you can store structured data. And then there's content providers where you can store structured or semi-structured data with user configurable data access, which means you can control what part of the database can be seen by an external application or the user and what part is private to your application. Again, we'll be discussing about content providers in a lot more detail in the upcoming videos. Don't worry about things if they seem a little bleak to you right now. Let's talk about file storage, which is our fourth option here, where you can store files on your memory card or SD card, whatever. And then, of course, there's the last option, which is our cloud storage, where you can use custom APIs like parse.com's APIs or Dropbox, Google Drive, SkyDrive kind of stuff. So let's see how each of these things work and when actually should you go for one of these options depending on your application with the help of a simple example. First, let's talk about shared preferences in our app. So there is a mobile app. Let's say you're trying to do some online shopping with that app. What you give here is a username say XYZ and a password say ABC123. Now your app is responsible for only storing this piece of information. What is the username and what is the password? So in this situation, if you guys notice, it is something like saying username equals XYZ, where username is something called key, and this XYZ becomes the value of that key. And then again, the same way you can say password equals ABC123, where the password is something called key, and ABC123 becomes a value, which is value for that key. So this is what is known as a key value pair. It's like a couple, you have two things. So you wanna store this kind of data in a shared preferences. So how do you do that? Well, you give the key later to the database and say, hey, what is my username? Then it will give you back X, Y, Z and say your username is X, Y, Z. So that would be key value pairs. And that's how you can store them using shared preferences. Now again, we'll be seeing about shared preferences in a lot more detail in the upcoming videos. But this idea behind this entire slide is to just give you a rough idea from a good high level perspective about what other different options available to you. Let's talk about the second method which is SQLite storage. Again, the same scenario, but this time you have the username XYZ, the password 123, and then you have say an order ID of what you're buying, a price, a quantity, a vendor, a discount, and you probably have many other pieces of related data out there. And you wanna store all this inside your app. Remember, previously you were only storing the username and password in the shared preferences case, but here, you're storing the other details, which is nothing but a set of related tables. So in this scenario, it is best recommended that you put the data inside an SQLite database, which stores data as tables that you guys have seen so far in SQL, Microsoft Access, or something like that. Then again, the third type of data is a little more trickier than the first two. Let's talk about this. Same scenario, this time you have your username and you have your other items over here that you wanna order, but Let's say instead of buying something, you're actually trying to download something. Like maybe you're buying an ebook online, or maybe you're buying a copyrighted piece of image or artwork online which you can download after purchasing it. So, here, what you need to manage is the credentials, the table data, and also the other data like the images and files like books that you want to share with other applications. Now, remember, you may or may not want to share this table that contains the order information, but you certainly want to share the books and the files that you have downloaded. So in this kind of situation, semi-structured or structured data where you need configurable access to what can be shown to other applications and what cannot, you can use a content provider. So next, let's talk about file storage. Same scenario again, but this time you're not bothered with the username, password, all you are interested is to download the files. Let's say you purchase something through your app and then you just care about the files that you downloaded like images or ebooks so that you can directly store them in the file storage on your phone's memory or SD card using the file storage APIs. And then last but not the least, let's take the same scenario 
with all the mixed cases available that is the content provider case but this time the entire data is not present anywhere on your phone what you want to simply do is put that data up on cloud storage now why would you do this think about this scenario where you have an app that allows your family to shop for stuff so you want to make sure that what other family members buy is not something which you have already brought and you probably want to see what your other household members are buying out there online from different sites so that kind of scenario encourages the sharing of data to each other through online storage and you can avoid storing some data locally on your phone and you can save some space using cloud storage apis now here parse.com dropbox apis google drive sky drive and there are probably a hundred thousand apis other than this which support cloud storage and we'll be seeing some of these apis in detail now again remember there is a fine line of decision to make whether you need to store the data locally on your phone or whether you need to go for cloud service now again in the upcoming videos we'll be discussing this in more detail as to which method should be actually suitable and appropriate for a given type of application so in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please subscribe to our channel let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below in this video please share this video support us in any way you can and thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day